north of Brisbane in tropical north Queensland. Welcome to Mackay for round two with the Penrod Oils Pro MX Championships brought to you by AMX Superstores. I'm Lee Hogan alongside former motocross and supercross star Danny Ham. At Danny, round one, we saw some incredibly good competition in the MX1 class, a lost opportunity for Kyle Webster, unfortunately, on some very valuable points. I agree, Lee. He really showed how fast he was. We heard all the hype going into it, moving into the 450s, the pre-races. He was very, very fast. Sand is his absolute domain. He was fast, he was leading, he didn't close it out and that's really important when you do move up into that that class, you need to be able to close it out and that's what will come with more experience. Now the CDA Yamaha Monster Energy boys of course, incredible one too, but Luke Clout dominating form winning both motos. He was our other pick wasn't he? Luke Clout was always going to be strong going in there. Maybe not as strong as we, uh, you know on a track like this in the sand we thought maybe not quite as strong but he's been putting the homework in, he was consistent all day and he ends up coming out on top exactly where he needs to be. Aaron Tanti, we knew he'd be good, we thought he'd be up there in the top three, hopefully, but he got second. Incredible job. Yeah, fantastic on the bike, with the debut for the team anyway. Um, he was a bit of a, an expected surprise, I guess you could say. We knew he'd do well. We weren't quite sure where he was going to sit. But yeah, what a ride by him, really boosting that confidence. And I think going further into this championship, he's going to be someone to uh, really look out for. And of course, the MX1 championship points after round one at one baggy, Danny. Oh man, can't do any better than that. Clean sweep, 50 points there for Luke Clout. 42 back to our second place of Tansy. It's still very tight, early days. Plenty of points to be made up here. Now the track here at Gum Valley Mackay, wow, everyone's been talking about it. Phenomenal, so picturesque. The surface here and the elevation, it's very exciting. It is, this is this is real motocross, you know. I turned up here and I just got so excited seeing it. So really stoked to see how it is. We've had heaps of rain come down, but it hasn't affected the track. And you got a chance to go out and have a look at it yesterday. Let's go and see what it's all about. Welcome to our track preview brought to you by Michelin Tyres. Now at any track you go to, the start's exceptionally important, but here at Gum Valley, if we have a look behind me, we can see this whole section is covered by grass. Slight bit of elevation as it turns into a right-hander that's quite possibly the fastest first turn on our whole circuit. If you keep looking, as it comes up and over the crest and down into turn two, this could quite possibly be one of the best passing opportunities on the whole track. Now, here in turn two is where the action really starts. If you have a look over my shoulder, you can see as the riders come out of the start, they'll come over the crest of this hill and down into what looks like very smooth at the moment, will develop some huge braking bumps. Riders will be up around fourth gear, but this is their last chance to make some very cool passing moves before riders settle into their positions and start copping some serious roost. On any given outdoor motocross track, we can normally expect about three, maybe four decent sized jumps. But here, deep in the sugarcane fields of Gum Valley, we've got not only the most amount of jumps, but some of the biggest jumps I've ever seen on any outdoor track. And none more so than this one right here. Measuring 30 meters from tip to tip, but not only the distance, if you have a look, we can see it turns around to the left and very, very technical. If the riders don't turn, they're gonna make their way off the track and have to come back on again. Gonna develop lots of bumps, and very tricky part of the circuit. Now right here where I'm standing is a seven meter wide patch where riders will be hoping to stick their lander after hitting this huge 30 meter booter. Well, that's our track preview here at Gum Valley with thanks to Michelin Tires. Who is going to launch out first? I'm gonna say keep your eyes peeled on Kyle Webster who's had the last two hole shots Drop of the gate and watch for a front fender to rocket out of the gate. Who is going to take it? Well, there was a blue bike that was trying to roll into it. The yellow gear around the outside, but it looked like possibly a Honda again that has got themselves a start and into that long sweeping left turn. Yeah, we've got a couple of red bikes up at the head of the pack. We'll try to make out. Was that a one, two for the Honda boys? We'll try to get a close up on who it is. Kyle Webster. Oh. Ferris. Ferris, Dean Ferris and Luke Cloud sliding back there. Kyle Webster's been uh, 
relegated back a few yes. spots to fourth place just in that turn two. Absolutely, those, uh, well, I thought they were Yamahas, but it looks like maybe it's Brett Metcalf that was in second as we look to the whole shot award. Carl Webster, sure enough. Three from whole three shot whole shots. I'd be really interested to. Oh, massive mistake from the triple one machine. And that oh. has gone, oh, how close have those two gone together? Wow, that, uh, that is scary moment right there. There was a big kick for Dean Ferris as he went down that straight. Matt Moss in third place is uh, definitely showing his presence here in the early stages of Moto1. Dean Ferris looked great in practice. Certainly a change, Dean Ferris, from the first uh, first round we saw. Uh, but getting back to your point, Cole Webb's a whole shot. He's back there in fifth. That doesn't mean too much early, early days, but what happened? He well, was there. And have a look who's next behind him, Todd Waters, who was one of the fastest in the pole shootout. Now, Kyle Webster was the only one in a 150. However, we had 151s from about five different riders. It was so close. I can't remember the last time we've had so many riders this close in their qualifying times, and that is hopefully going to reflect in the race here. These guys do not want to oh. let Luke Cloud. The oh. state from Ferris puts him on the ground. He was in such a good position. Yeah, it's a shame. He had a great start to the motor on that one. I uh, saw also Tanti having a, a very awkward landing off that finish line jump. Who sits there in second place. So all of a sudden we've got CDR, Yamaha again, one and two. Matt Moss though, this is a much better position for him. This is exactly where we expect to see him. And I think it also caught a glimpse of it that maybe a little bit of rain has fallen and a little bit of drizzle. Maybe that's playing into it. Well, like we said earlier on in the live stream that Matt Moss from day dot since he got here in Mackay, he's had business in his eyes. He's a little bit of a different rider, and that certainly can be seen. Oh, oh and the commentator's curse gets Matt, and he's gone down, and he looks to have done himself a bit of damage. Either that or he is stuck. Is he stuck under the bike, or is he... Uh... I think he's stuck. No, he's... Oh, no, he is... Uh... That's a that right knee. leg, it's either knee or ankle. Oh, so unfortunate. He was looking so good, but let's get back to the action. Luke Clout out in front, and already Aaron Tanti is trying to throw that hook in and get that toe early on in this one. He knows if he lets Clout get away early in this, it's going to be very difficult to wind him back in. So this could develop to be something special. Have a look at this replay. Yeah, let's take a look at the start. Once again, a beautiful jump out of the gate from Matt Moss on the left. He just had a couple of riders up the inside, and I wish we could see what happened to the whole shot of Kyle Webster and what eventuated in him getting slotted back through the pack a little. There is that close moment. That was, that was so very close. close and uh, didn't mean to get that close. It just turned out that way. And then unfortunately goes down just there. Yeah, and this loose river sand, as Todd Waters explained it to me during the week, I got to talk to the Queenslander doing a bit of research on this track and he explained the soil and the sand perfectly. He said, it looks great to the spectators and people at home watching, but when you're riding, it's so loose. And that just claimed Dean oh. Ferris on this corner right here. And Metcalf. Off the side of the track, yeah. on the same corner. A little kick going into that turn and just unable to pull that bike up. So he drops back a couple now. That was a good start for him also. Webster has moved himself into third and starting to work his way forward. Waters is not far behind him either. There is Webster on screen as we see our pit boards coming out for the riders from their mechanics, trying to give him some early information. Now, do you think, Danny, perhaps we're seeing a slightly more composed Kyle Webster here? And here's the replay of uh, Brett Metcalf going off the side of the track, a little off-track excursion coming back on. Oh, no. oh we've had a rider right gone down. Yamaha. And in the big woods. one, and he is hurting, and we'll try to pick up who that is. We can't see jersey number. 29. 29, number 29, uh, Navarin Grofuse. So, more Nav, a, a, a ride originally. Oh, oh, oh massive he's gone crash. Down. Huge crash from Luke Clout. That was a, a massive 90-90 to the side, and we already have oh, Red cross, cross flag up. Oh, that was a nasty fast Started at the base of the takeoff ramp there, and we could see just as Luke went out of camera angle that it was looking like it was destined to be down, and sure enough, just coming into screen to come across the top. We can only hope that he is okay. That was a very, very quick pulling out of the Red Cross flag. We can only hope that he is okay and able to, to remount. 
So let's regroup, see who is where now. Aaron Tanti should have taken over the lead of this race in front of Cole Webster as well. Uh, Todd Waters behind him as we just take a look at this. Now, right have just before the jump here, he gets Slides. a big boot out of this one. There. Slide sideways boot, oh. hits that kick is sideways. That, that was all gone. For him to even make it up that, wow, that was carrying some momentum. That's about as big as it gets, and it is amazing how quickly the pendulum can swing yes. in the momentum of a series. To be undefeated and go 1-1, come here once again to a very similar circuit and be leading, and then for that to happen, it is, uh, it's crazy. It's certainly what you don't want to have happen in these early stages of the race, but Aaron Tanti, I cannot say enough about him. Yep. And this is his breakout year. Of yes. course, we think of him as a rookie, but it's not his first year in the 450s. But up against these guys, Kyle Webster, it's his rookie year in the 450. Aaron Tanti, these two guys are shining like a diamond at the moment. Water's there in third place as we see the yellow flags being waved. Let's head down to Cam Williams. We're down here in the pits, Aaron Clout. A medical flag out for Luke Clout right now. This is cruel sport sometimes, isn't it? No, it's brutal. It's savage, but it's racing. Anything can happen. So it's part of it, unfortunately. Any word through your radio exactly what's happened to Luke at this point? Uh, we're still waiting to hear from anyone about it. But, um, yeah, it's not looking good because he's not circulating. So we just got to wait for the information and see if we can, yeah, even finish this or get into photo too. So we'll see what happens. All right, fingers crossed, Luke. Back to you, gentlemen. Yeah, our thoughts are certainly with Luke at the moment and hoping for the best and of course his brother there, you know, it's one thing to be a mechanic and the vested interest that you have in your rider when it's, when it's your own flesh and blood that's your brother, he's just uh, a very composed and, and well done interview there with him, so yeah, certainly hoping that uh, that Luke Cloud is, is okay, an absolute true champion. On screen at the moment, Kyle Webster starting to let it all hang out and keeping Aaron Tanti in view, but I like the way that Aaron Tanti keeps his composure and stays nice and smooth. Now, I remember back, I did a little piece with these guys talking about the teammates, Luke Clout, Aaron Tanti. Luke Clout said, well, got a little insight, the size of his legs, and I'm watching him ride at the moment. He is a monster on the bike, Aaron Tanti. When you look at his legs and how much he grips the bike, there's a lot of control there. And I must admit, I hadn't noticed it until Luca brought this up. Yeah, it's uh, very physical on the bike, but he controls it so well, doesn't he? He really muscles that bike to exactly where it needs to be. Uh, just watching also the way Webster is starting to flow through them lines, the stand up of those ruts. He is looking very comfortable, and right now he's creeping towards the race lead. He sits back there around about two seconds gap back to him at the moment, but I expect that will close up a little bit as we go down to the bottom of the track here. This is the, yes, for the clouds, so the riders doing very well to observe the flags as we roll through here at a very safe uh, speed. And, and it's so important that these riders, and you're not going to get two nicer people off the track. On the track, of course, the horns come out for both of these guys, but very important under a red, uh, under a red cross flag situation like this that no one makes up or loses any ground, just to keep it fair, and these guys will make sure they do that. TNT up and over, great shot there Beautiful with the crowd just observing and enjoying this motocross race. The Thor MX1 really delivering some spectacular sights at the moment. There is Webster with a bit of an in-swinger. So you can see these boys are really pushing. I'll tell you, quietly behind them is Todd Waters and looking very comfortable at the moment. It hasn't stepped out anywhere along the way. There is Metcalf back there in fifth. He sits behind Ferris, of course. And a good ride by both of these guys. Yeah, interesting to see. Waters hasn't dropped off too much at all. Still well in the game. Ferris, still very impressive, as is Metcalf, who's making a press on Dean Ferris. Gibbsy having dropped back just a ways. Perhaps need to pick up just a little bit. Gives you a rider who certainly has spent a little bit of time on this track. McCarth on that KTM. All those ruts almost catching another rider out as he went off the top of that just one. Just trying to get a very creative line that nearly ended yes. up disastrous. Here is Waters on the 47 machine. Two days of AORC over the last couple of days. Also, plenty of kilometres done in this venue, not so much on this track. 
But uh, certainly he is well and truly warmed up going into today's motocross race. As we see Tandy put a lap down on. I like the line he's been using there, not that time around, but he's been squaring off the front of that uh, of that little berm and taking very inside and avoiding all those bumps. And just taking a look at the lap times, Danny, that previous lap, Aaron Tandy with a two minute flat point seven, where Kyle Webster with a two minute flat point two. So taking out a good half a second from the race leader here. I'm liking the way that Kyle Webster's being a little bit more patient this time. It appears that we may have cleared uh, the injured rider of clouds, which is good to see that the uh, race safe crew have been able to get there and uh, stay on top of that. And let's head down to Cam Williams. Just down here, HRC Honda, Jared Pine, one and four, oh, sorry, two and four right now. Oh, yeah. How do you manage this? Ah, uh, it's not really me. But uh, boys on the pit board are doing a good job at the moment, so hopefully Dino can just creep forward a little more. Webbo, I'm back into the end, so every key will come home strong. How's the anxiety with you right now? You're completely helpless almost, aren't you? I am now, but uh, yeah, still real nervous. But that's just his sport, I guess, so. Awesome, fingers crossed for the rest of it. Cheers, mate, thanks. Yeah, great to uh, have a quick chat there from Piney and get a perspective from inside the pit area. It's quite often even more nerve-wracking than when, on, when you're on the bike yourself because it's completely out of your hands. Well, 13 minutes to go here in MX1 Moto1 with thanks to Thor. We'll be back real soon after a quick little break. Welcome back to Mackay for round two of the Penrod Hills Pro MX Championships. A replay here of that devastating crash we saw from Luke Cloud as he was leading Moto One here at the MX One class. But the battle continues at the head of the pack between his teammate Aaron Tanti, who continues to impress, and a firing Kyle Webster who is trying to make amends after a round one that he would like to forget. These two are getting closer and closer on the track but they have not checked out from their competition. Danny Ham as Todd Waters is managing to get tagged along. Yeah, we see Tanty starting to feel that pressure from the Honda rider behind him, but we were mentioning that he uh, he handles the pressure pretty good. We saw it at one thing, and then when it became obvious or a bit too much, he did the very smart thing and just backed it down a little bit to conserve and make sure that he finished out the race. So he's got a wise head on him at the moment, uh, and right now he's doing well to deal with that pressure and stay up the front. He's doing very well. And if we have a look here, the gap that has just been established between Tanty back to Webster is purely related to lap riders. Now, quite often, lap riders don't play into your favour when you're the race leader. You come around, they don't know they get to put a lap down until the race leader gets to them. In this particular exchange, Change right here. It was Kyle Webster who, whether it was bad luck or bad management, managed to come off second best here. Now he needs to try to get that time back again and a little bit of snake inside the side there. That's a strong part of the circuit for Webster with those Beautiful tight. Beautiful line there. Yeah, that's the thing, especially through those tight left rights back there. He's got some great lines. Oh, look at this huge jump! Absolutely huge out of nowhere. I did not see that coming. Well, two laps ago when that was on camera there, he took that same line and jumped about five metres further than Aaron Tanti. But how did he set that up from so far back? Let's watch this Honda replay. It is literally like he was going about 20 kilometres an hour faster. Right there is where Tanti should and I dare say will with the racer's brain that he's got on his shoulders. He needs to change up his line there. But has, uh, has Kyle Webster just pulled out the Mario Kart uh, <laughs> button and just left these guys in his wake at the moment? Or uh, Aaron Tandy needs to somehow react to this push in pace that we've seen from Kyle Webster. This lap time should be astronomical. Well, Wait and see what it is. The only thing we need to consider is, and I'm wondering if this could be the culprit behind why we're seeing this extra pace from him, is did he get a little bit irritated with that exchange with the lap riders where he lost so much time? Because it just seemed like he dropped the hammer. The, mo the moment that he, and a mistake there from Kyle Webster, the moment he got past that lap rider is when it all happened, and it happened so quickly. Pass another one of our lap riders through this part. As I said, the upfield, this is a strong part of the circuit for him. Tanty doing well just to latch onto the back here, learn some new lines and see where that time is going to be. 
another look at this replay. Have a look at the back end, step out just a little bit here, off that kick. So it's very clear that he's pushing hard as they go up towards that finish line and up and over. And there we go, fastest lap for this race, a 155.7 is to our leader. Wow. wow, and that was with being held up with a lapper. That is just incredible. And so now I think the issue that he's had in the past and what he needs to do is to manage and control the race and to, you know, not, not let those questions come up into your head where you can start to think, okay, I made some big mistakes at one thing. You need to be mentally strong enough to keep that out of your mind and focus on the job at hand. And when you start to see yourself pulling out a lead like he has already, he's in a league of his own. Yep. He needs to treat this just like it's a midweek practice session with your mechanic and the two of them need to work together with what's going out on the pit board. Start working on lap times and manage the race like a midweek practice session. Well, it was almost a three second difference in the lap time that last time around for first and second and it is clear on screen to see that that lead is stretching out ever so quickly. And uh, man, what's Tandy got to do? I know when he made that pass and that's uh, that replay that we saw, it was kind of, Tandy looked over, he was like, where did you come from? He had no idea. Yeah, and clearly in a league of his own at the moment, if we scan our attention back to lap times for second, third, fourth, fifth, and we look at Tandy with a 158.8, and Todd Ward is a 159, but then we go back to Ferris and Metcalf, both in the 57s. So if things continue down the pattern they're going at the moment, it's shaping up to an awesome battle between third, fourth, and fifth. Tanty is clearly showing that he's next best in line at the moment. Now Danny just quickly a 156.4, 156.4 for Kyle Webster in that last lap compared to 159 from Tanty, but a 157 from Water. So a complete two seconds that Waters has made up on Tanti, and he finds himself only three seconds behind Aaron Tanti with two minutes to go. Could we see that develop into a battle for second place? Maybe, well, look at this inside line here by Metcalf. Beautiful. What a drive. He managed to get the perfect line, but Ferris didn't want to give it up. He's had to back out of that one as the two lines were going to come together, and Metcalf has made the pass up into fourth place. Now, can he start working on uh, water's right there in front of him and will Ferris be able to hold on and tag along and keep that momentum going? Some great battles going on. This is what we like to see in MX1, but we don't always see. You see it regularly, MX3, MX2, MX1 quite often. We've got a little bit of discrepancy in people checking out and leaving other people behind. Uh, not so much the case in this particular race. Some great battles going on. However, Kyle Webster, of course, having himself a very nice, handy little gap. Right there on that Honda replay was the pass made by Metcalf. As we go back to Aaron Tanti, who sits there in second place, looking very comfortable at the moment, managing to match his lap time to our third place rider of Todd Waters. So no difference made there, and we are getting to the very closing part of this race. I'm sure his board has been out to inform him that uh, Waters was on his way to catching up to him. He just needs to step it up a fraction. And there is our leader, clear of everyone, blasting down that very fast straight. And look at those braking bumps. That's a great shot there, seeing, you know, that you, you don't get that much more factory suspension than what we see on the Honda HRC machine of Kyle Webster's bike here in Australia. And to see the bike dancing around there, all the bikes dancing around, that just goes to show. Imagine if you've got your, uh, your, your production bike straight out of the motorcycle shop from home and tried to wheel it around this particular track here. You're going to have your hands full. That just shows how deep, rutted and bumpy this track is here at Gum Valley having not put a foot wrong at all. And how about that for a nice creative line through the corner, Danny Hamm? It, it, it could almost be forgiven for thinking that was a slight mistake, which turned it into something very creative and actually pretty awesome. Yep. Up and over the flyover jump right next to our crowd up near the bar on the hill. We're going to be very close to time being elapsed by the time it comes through. We've got 13 seconds on the clock and a couple of switchbacks still to go. Will we make it through? I believe... It'll elapse, I think. Yes, it will. So Kyle Webster will come through now. Two seconds left on the clock. Only just made it by about, I'm going to say, three or four seconds and boom, last lap board comes out. So one lap to go. 
the duration for Honda HRC rider Kyle Webster. And one word comes to mind, redemption. He had all the pressure on his shoulders at round one and all the expectation. A lot of people called his home turf to come out and go 1-1. One, one, and it wasn't to be. In fact, it was his arch rival and nemesis, Luke Cloud, who went 1-1. One, one. And Webster left with his tail between his legs. He has come back. And has he come back in a big way? Fantastic ride for Webster up and over past the mechanics area for the final time in this moto number one. Down to the bottom here, and this is where we spoke of just a moment ago, those huge braking bumps coming into that turn. They are searching for any kind of room on the track, any real estate to be able to find a smoother line coming down into that one. But you ride that bike handling so well. Yes, dancing around, but well in control of our ride. Yes, our rider out in the lead swings down the bottom of the circuit he'll have another left rider to deal with still six seconds back or well, 6.8 seconds back to Tanti waters back behind them so those deficits weren't able to be made up and uh, it looks like this may be the way this one closes out such a picturesque part of the track here as Kyle Webster comes through and in amongst the sugar cane and he'll make his way up and start climbing towards that huge 30 meter tabletop with a kink in it one of the most technical sections of the track and from there it tightens up to numerous switchbacks that will bring him towards that checkered flag. Cole Webster has not put a foot wrong, he has been methodical, calculated, not made any mistakes, did it with a whole shot but somehow got relegated back a few positions to fourth, maybe fifth and one at a time picked his way through before dropping a 155 and laying the gauntlet down and showing what he's made of and what he is prepared to do. And there's the fist pump. And that is how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. MX1, Moto1 from Thor in the books for Kyle Webster. The Honda HRC rider takes the first win of the day and notches up maximum points. Aaron Tanti continuing to impress back there in second place on the CDR Yamaha Monster Energy Machine. Todd Ward is back there in third. Aaron Chanty, CDR Yamaha Monster Energy. Consistency is key in this championship, and that was a very smart ride. Yeah, uh, you know, it was a bit wild at the first. Like, I didn't, I was a bit back in the pack off the start, like, you know, fifth or sixth. I made a few quick moves and got behind my teammate, Luke, uh, who unfortunately had a decent crash. I hope he's all good. Um, but yeah, I just rode a little bit too hard at the start of the motor and tightened up a bit, and Kyle was riding well. And But, uh, you know, I managed to hang on to second, and I was happy with that. Fantastic. Best of luck for the second one. Thank you. Going to swing straight over here to Kyle Webster. Kyle Webster, HRC Honda Racing. One word for you, mate. Vindication. How does it feel? <laughs> Much better. Uh, I feel like that's how the last, well, a few weekends should have gone, but, you know, you live and you learn, and I feel like we did that in the last couple of weeks. So I'm stoked with that ride. Just took my time a little bit and followed everybody and sorted the track out. I think that's what I what I needed to do. And, um, yeah, I really hope Luke's all right. That looked like a nasty spot to come off. Um, so yeah, I hope to with Luke and um, yeah, get after it in the next moto. One down, one to go, best of luck. That's it, thank you. Just gonna sneak over here oh. for one moment, Todd Waters, Ironman Award for the weekend. Todd Waters, mate, third place in that one. Um, the old school guys, you, Metcalf and Ferris, going at it for the majority of that moto. Yeah, pretty cool, isn't it? Like, uh, I got off to a shocking start and I just wedged it through everyone and banged some bars and got myself in a good position. And uh, I watched these two guys going at it. Um, I was back a little bit and uh, obviously there was a bad accident with Luke Clout. Like, uh, I hope he's OK. I've seen him laying there for a little while. So my thoughts go out to him. We never like to see that. But um, my bike's working good. My legs aren't. I just, I just buckled out there. My legs just sort of gave way, and uh, and Medi was on my bum. So I just, I didn't see last lap board. So when the finish flag came out, I was like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Black and white checkered Christmas for you, then, wasn't it, buddy? Oh, you believe it. It's, uh, it's been a long three days, and we got one more moto to go. And can't thank Husqvarna enough. Uh, Maxis tyres, uh, T Dub riding gear. If you need some gear, come see me. But uh, oh yeah, we're off here. <laughs> Good on you, back to the gentleman in, uh, in live. Cheers. One board goes sideways. We are ready for start of the Thor MX1 Moto Number Two. It's a 
on the one that looks at things that's straight out looks in front. Like Ferris, I think, yeah, it is. That's Webster and the uh, outside. Looks like Kyle Webster slotted into, I believe, third place. But another good start for Dean Ferris. Another hole shot. That's Kirk Gibbs there in second place. Also, Metcalf with a, a good launch out as the rest of the riders battle their way through that turn. Now, I believe Cole Webster did what he did in the first race and has gone back even further once again. It's that turn two that got him. He went that wide on the exit of the corner. He nearly went off the side of the track. Yeah, position coming through that first turn puts you to the outside as we see the 100% hole shot that, of course, is going to the triple one machine of Dean Ferris. And he is starting to stretch out early on in this one. Tanty back there in third place. I'm sure he's going to be trying to make those moves early, especially if he knows that Webster is a little bit further back in the start. Oh, nice crossover line there by Tanty. Gee, wouldn't it be good to see Dean Ferris start to find that form that we saw when he was dominant in Australian motocross? He's got it in him, he just needs to find it once again. This could be a breakout ride for him. It's going to be very difficult. 25 minutes plus a lap on a track like this, so much can happen. He's got Kirk Gibbs behind him, then Aaron Tanty, Brett Metcalf, Todd Waters, then Kyle Webster. This could be the perfect opportunity for Dean Ferris. Webster is going to uh, slowly work at this one. He's got a lot of big name riders up there. As we see that pressure still being applied by Tanty around the outside of Gibbs. Should stay nice and low here and get a good run into the woods. Can he make this pass this early on through here? Looks to the outside. Good Beautiful run in here. Beautiful line from Tanty. Beautiful. Can he hold the inside and make the pass? Oh, very gentleman bike through there. As we see the back end getting a little step out sideways from Tanty. But a big jump down the inside. Will he remember? the pass that was made on him. Very oh. nicely covered from Kirk Gibbs on the inside, but just around the outside, calling the bluff and answered the call. That was beautiful from Tanty. And he sets his sights off towards Dean Ferris. Metcalf still in there in third place as we look to the back of the screen just there. Look for Webster. He's in behind both of these guys. Waters out wide, cuts across to the inside. So he'll be on the left coming down this straight. Camera right. Drop into this one. Oh, tries to make that move just there. There is Webster. Let's have a look at the Honda replay here. And this is really, uh, like we mentioned earlier on, anytime you tip it in on the outside of a rider, you're basically daring them to hold it on into you. And that was just beautiful from Aaron Tanti. And that oozes confidence. A move like that is confidence. We saw this kind of form in the first moto by Ferris. Early on, I saw it. He was looking really good. Uh, but towards the end of the moto there, maybe just lost the back wheel of the rider in front of him and just faded back ever so slightly. But a position like this, this is, as you said, what can turn it around for you. A little bit of confidence knowing that you can run again up the front. And we all know he can. He's a multi-time champion. He's not a slouch at all and he can run up there. So is this what's going to make the difference? Gibbs, did you see that in the background? I did. Gibbs all out of control, coming out of that rut, did not get any drive out of there. But is that Webster that's moved in front of Waters, possibly? Yes. He has made the move and he's just methodically picking his way through. But what I would like to point out, I do believe it's only a matter of time before Ferris comes under fire from Tanty because Tanty, you can start to see, look at, oh! Wow. A huge mistake there. He just needs to be very careful. He doesn't end up being the second of the CDA Yamaha Monster Energy riders to end up down in a big way. Because if you go down at that speed through those whoops, it's going to hurt. However, trying to pick up and read the intensity levels from Aaron Tanti, you could almost get up inside his helmet and read what he's thinking, that he, need, he needs to get into the lead and try to pull out a little bit of a gap before Webster comes through. Let's go down to camp. The Michelin track review showed us an immaculate gum valley. It was dead flat. Now we get here in the very last moment of the day and have a look at what we've got. There is not one flat section in this track anywhere. And the guys are using it to their advantage. We just saw Todd Waters and Dean Ferris come absolutely railing through here at full noise. Interestingly enough as well, you can see just down there where it's starting to get a little bit yellow. So the hard pan base is really starting to come through. And you're really going to maximise the use of the suspension on these machines. And also just picked up, uh, I think that may have been Rikers with a very interesting uh, line there, shall we say. Uh, back on with Dean Ferris at the head of the pack and he's coming under a little bit of increasing pressure from Tanti who just dropped a 157.2 on the last lap to a 158.2 for Dean Ferris. The 
sand can grab very quickly. So that's dropping back one more as we take another quick Honda replay. Watch the front wheel of Gibbs just as he dives into this corner. And I think he may just step over a little bit too far. Oh no, dab of the foot. Foot dab. Oh, nearly yep. off the back of the bike. That, that was. He did very well to oh. keep that upright. So as we said a moment ago, it's the mistakes that are probably going to present the opportunities, and it's exactly what's happened. And that's moved Webster up into third. But again, patience, taking your time. A bit of a gap now, and what we see is Webster back in third place. Interesting line there from Tanti. It wasn't the prettiest, but it managed to put him on some beautiful, smooth dirt. We'll see if that plays out here down into turn two. I reckon he made up a little bit of time. But the point I was about to make was Webster with completely clear air ahead of him through to Tanti in second place, who I believe is his main focus in this moto and of course in the championship points hall. 12 minutes, we are half race distance right now as the riders drop down to the bottom part of our circuit through the AMX turn and around this left-hander. Nice line from Brett Metcalf. Yeah, that inside works well. It may be a little bit rougher, but you just don't have to travel as far around the outside. You still managed to get to the outside though in that, uh, in that lead up to this jump opens up quite a few optional lines as they go into that jump through the right-hander. Gibbs uh, looks like he's lost a little bit of that intensity that he had early on in this one. After that small moment, Metcalf though, right onto the back wheel. Let's get down to Cam though, trackside. You got this is truly amazing as we watch these riders come down here in the second moto of the day. If you're ever curious to know how fit these guys are as we watch Brett Metcalf get into it with Kurt Gibbs, here is a true indication of this. Not only they've got to come down the hill, pick the gear, get the brakes, set the body up, then they've got to muscle the bike through deep, deep sand in this section. Fascinating racing here in Moto2. Yes, the track really starting to deteriorate, as you would expect at this time of the day. You know, we're at the business end of the day and only 11 minutes to go here on MX1 Moto2, brought to you by Thor. And it really is time for Kyle Webster to you know, start to drop the hammer just a little bit. He's eased his way into the race. If your head's not in the game at the moment, you don't have your eye in and you're not hitting your marks, it's not gonna happen, you know? Like, so it is time to start to wind the wick up a little bit, but that doesn't necessarily mean throw caution to the wind and start taking risks. Nice line there from Kirk Gibbs. And interestingly, interesting enough, uh, we saw a mistake there from Cole Webster before that uh, Kirk Gibbs came across a lap rider. Otherwise, he was all over the back of Webster. Now, I don't know what caused that to happen. And if we have a look at the intervals, we see Tant is only 1.4 off the back of Ferris. Now Webster's starting to edge his way back up, 1.8 behind Tanty. But not long ago, it was three seconds. So something happened, either a mistake or he's uh, been held up by a lap rider. Bit of cat and mouse at the moment between all of these guys. Each of them have made and lost time on their relative positions to the guys in front. Again, that front mistake. wheel getting dragged down by these ruts. Back wheel stepping out over the top of that rut. So there's no doubt that these guys are still pushing pretty, pretty hard, trying to uh, close up those distances and maintain those spots. Aaron Tanti on the number nine machine. CDR Yamaha Monster Energy Bike doing another great ride. Great round again. And uh, is set at the moment as it finishes provisionally. It looks like he might be coming away with the red plate. But there is still six minutes to go in this race. We are not done with it yet. Fantastic ride though by Dean Ferris out in front. They're closing up, first, second, third. It's starting to close up, that is for sure. But what an incredible ride, like you said, from Dean Ferris on the factory HRC Honda machine in first and third at the moment. And Tanti left to fly the flag all by himself for CDA Yamaha Monster Energy. And he's been doing a, a great job, just needs to continue doing what he's doing. But how is it going to play out for these last five and a half minutes? As we see these first three place getters coming through and making their way through this treacherous part of the track as they cross over past that start line. Well, fastest on track, last lap around. 
uh, was Kirk Gibbs. That's his fastest for the race, and that was the last lap. So he's a full second quicker, second and a bit quicker than our leader on that last lap. Hard charge being put on at the moment from Kyle Webster. He has decided. We've got the five minutes to go, Mark. He has decided it's time to go. And you can visually see the difference in intensity from him as he comes through. This is his bread and butter here. Through those sand whoops there and down as we head into this corner. Totally different lines. Let's watch as Ferris comes through. But normally, Tanti hits the inside. No, he's changed his line here. So he's moved out to the line that Ferris and uh, Webster were taking. Up until that point, Aaron Tandy being taken that inside line. Kyle Webster goes to the inside here. Completely different lines, and how's that going to play out as they make their way through this very big jump? Well, Tanty still manages to hold that position at the moment, but you're right, Lee, the charge is certainly on. We are in the closing parts of this one, and Webster knows it. He wants to get past. These are valuable points in the championship. He really needs to uh, put big in to get past at the moment. As they jump up over this, there is the little rut just before that now. So, little leap over. This is the strong part of Webster. Will we see it in the whoops or even maybe the similar... Oh, wow. Long way around the outside there. A little bit of a gamble. And luckily, he railed it. He's still lost time, but luckily he railed that fast because you know, he needs to try to get back onto the rear end of Tanty now, which... You know, you can't sometimes just do it the drop of a hat. And that's the, the calculated risk that you have to take sometimes when you get out of the race line, isn't it? It is. Looking at the times again, pretty even still through all of them. Will we see a repeat of this single jump? I don't think Aaron Tanti will let that happen again. As they cross down across the start line, three and a half minutes left to go in this Charges plus one lap. So hard is Kyle Webster. He is edged up onto the back now. Different lines here. Can he try to set up? almost over that first part of the berm there and this is a very very fast part of the track for Kyle Webster and coming down into this turn two where the sand whoops resemble something that you'd get over in Western Australia over look at the lead now that yes. Dean Ferris has managed to stretch out that these two have erupted into their own little battle well Ferris's lap time the last time around was quickest on track so he is uh, he knows how to play out a moto himself he's done a lot of them very experienced international rider as well so he knows closing part of this look at Gibbs, Gibbs back on again Gibbs is back there wow this is fantastic to see the MX1 class like this and so close and what did we say at the end of lap one wouldn't it be great if it, we saw this as the resurgence of Dean Ferris let's have a little bit of a look here of course with a Honda replay Tanty oh I missed Big that mistake one. mistake there. I did too. And that was because we were focused on Kurt Gibbs and how much of a, a good job he was doing getting oh, back in the mix. Look how tight it is oh. now. Big swing up the inside. Swing and a miss though. By, oh. oh, but Tanti completely muffed up that corner right there. And that has allowed Webster to go straight past. Oh, over jump by a <laughs> mile. <laughs> Off the track almost. I think you turned a 30 metre jump into a 35 metre jump right there. But that has got the bit between your teeth, the red mist in the goggles, however you want to explain it. That's going into Kyle Webster mode. And he doesn't have very long if he wants to try to reel in his teammate. But let's have another look here at how hard he hits this jump, leans in and launches and goes, uh-oh, where's the landing ramp? There it is, about 10 metres behind me. Well, this has really made things interesting because we do have the KTM riders both onto the back wheel of Aaron Tanti as well. We see Kirk Gibbs was right there and he has dragged along Metcalf as well into this battle. So let's have a look at the gap. We've got one minute 20 to go and we've got a 4.6 second gap from Ferris back to Kyle Webster. Is it time to go, you know what, I'm not going to reel that in. Let's take a second here. Oh, Gibbs. Gibbs around the outside. The wheels are starting to fall off for Aaron Tanti ever so slightly. And he needs to be careful because it doesn't end there. Brett Metcalf, Todd Waters. Where has Todd Waters come from? I know. These are the guys that have been around a long time in the sport. They know when it counts. And they know they've got two laps to do. Look at Waters down the outside of Brett Metcalf with a huge launch down there. And he has moved up one position as well, right onto the back wheel. Is that Tanty right there in front of him? It is. So watch for the inside line here. Who is going to take it? They both follow each other through. I just think what we're seeing from Aaron Tanti at the moment is blown up. He's, he's either got some form of arm pump or he's, he's, he is suffering because yeah. have a, he is gas for sure. Have a look at the 
launch that we have got from Todd Waters, who is just, he's under siege as Aaron Tanti. And this is brilliant to watch this kind of racing here. Down, oh look at the outside line here, the old guys around the outside. It's not close enough though as we're getting small left riders. We will see the last lap board as our leaders come over this time around, but this certainly is where the excitement of this last lap will be for the moment. Can Todd Waters get up around Tanty? Will he drag along Brent Metcalf as well? And will Gibbs get up there and challenge Webster? I don't think so. I think he's safe at the moment. This is just absolutely fantastic. We've got a, a handful of the riders that, you know, on the weekly are pulling out the just for men to get rid of some of the greys in the beard and the hair. And they're in there battling with the likes of Webster and Tanty. And, you know, the younger blood, the younger crew coming through. And this is so good to see this kind of fire from Gibbs, from Ferris back in form, the kind of form that we were hoping to see him in. Ferris 3.9 clear of Webster. So. Having a look at the provisional championship points on the right after the uh, passes have been made, and that will put Webster into the lead of the yes, championship. Brent Blake by three points now over Todd. War uh, sorry, over Aaron Tandy, Todd Waters, and that one's not finished yet too. Because look at Todd Waters; he is still working on the back there of Tandy with a very quick run down here. Will he dive it up to the inside? It's going to be brave. Well, he's done it. He has. What a pass. Now, how will Aaron Tanti respond to this? What he needs to be careful of, if he loses another spot, they're all valuable championship points. Next in line to come past him will be Brett Metcalf, of course, with Waters having just made the pass. But the moment is all about Dean Ferris, the triple one machine, who it seems like just yesterday has come back from a broken spine, a broken back, and he didn't know if he wanted to ride he said in a piece that we got at One Thaggy, you know what, it was, I was on the couch doing nothing and I was watching this new Pro MX thing and all the TV coverage it was getting, I was going, I need to be a part oh, of this. Tanti off the bike almost. And he loses the position as we go back to our leader at the moment. He's only got a couple more turns to go. The triple one machine, Dean Ferris, is going to be looking to his first win in how long, Lee? So, so long. Yeah, this is exciting times and uh, what a moment for the Honda camp here. You know, that we've got new team manager Glenn Griffiths taking on, on the roll and what a fantastic moment as the hand up in the air is almost just as surprised as anyone. Tanti's what, off the track. What, 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 what has happened here, we're trying to pick up, has Tanti managed to make his way through? We'll try to bring that in. What has gone on there? So many things happening here as we uh, receive the chequered flag. Dean Ferris takes the win from Kyle Webster, who will get the overall and take the championship points lead and red plate. But what happened to Tanti? He has taken an off-track excursion. He's bent up bent handlebars. He massively. Is, it, the wheels have totally fallen off in the latter part of the race here for Tanti. Wow, I wonder what happened on that part. Three Husqvarna racing, Todd Waters. Man, what a weekend and what a great way to finish it. Oh, it's fantastic. Like, uh, we dreamt and I put it to Husqvarna to do the, the double. Um, there was a lot of against it, but uh, I assured that I could do it. And I've I put in a massive pre-season. Uh, my fiance Jilly's my trainer, so she's been putting the whip down. And cousin Jason's my mechanic and, and practice mechanic. So I've had the team and the group around me, my, my parents as always, mum and dad, and uh, little Macy's here. So I've had what I needed to achieve it. I worked hard. Um, we got on the box in two days in the off-road and then uh, put it on the box here in the motocross, it was good. That last moto, um, I had nothing left. Like I was, uh, I was charging, I just left it back. So then I'd push and I could just go to the finish. And unfortunately, I wish I had another lap to try and get Gibbsy, but uh, man, it was a solid ride. I was proud of that. Congratulations, spectacular effort. Massive shout out to Husqvarna. They've given me the bike to do it. And uh, my Maxxis tires are hooking up as always. Um, Oakley, T-Dub, City Boots. We got them all, Asterix and uh, Dirty Steve and Motorex. Everyone's in there and it's, uh, I'm pumped. This is this feels like winning. Thanks, guys. All right. Number two in the Honda HRC, Quinella in this one. Feels pretty good, Kyle Webster, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. That was a uh, that was a hard ride. I didn't get the best of starts, and I was behind a lot of fast dudes. So to make some passes on that track was really difficult. It was um, it it doesn't look one line, but there's just one fast line. So. It was hard to uh, manoeuvre around all of that and 
Massive congratulations to Todd and Dean. Todd, that's a massive weekend. He's a, he's a, he's a weapon, and to Dean, awesome race. So it's really good for Honda, one, two, and um, yeah, I just knew I had to get to second for the overall, and um, that's what we pushed to right up until the end. Congratulations on a great effort. Thank you very much. Last man down, I'm going to sneak over here, Dean Ferris. Man, it's been a torrid couple of years for you, hasn't it? I'm going to get emotional talking about this. You've had some big injuries, you've had some time off, and here you are back on the podium, man. How does it feel? Oh, man, I'm stoked. You know, I was doing the moto and it felt like old times, but when I went across the finish line, it was like a massive relief. You know, I made the decision to come back to the sport. I felt like I wasn't done. I put in a lot of work. Um, the Honda team has as well, and... It's only in the last two weeks that I got comfortable on the bike and it's a big turnaround from round one. But man, I got the whole shot and uh, yeah, just kind of ticked off the laps like I would and uh, you know, come home with the dub. So it's been like three years since I have raced a national. Um, my last one was in 2019 and uh, obviously there wasn't that much racing and I, ha I had a huge injury and I thought I was stepping away from the sport, but I'm just stoked to be back. And uh, <laughs> straight up to get a moto win. I mean, uh, I didn't get the overall, but it's a start and I'm stoked. Congratulations on a great effort. Thank you. Well, sensational job there for Dean Ferris, taking victory there in the second moto, but the overall, of course, going to Kyle Webster. Well, with two rounds of the Penrod Oils Pro MX Championships in the books already, we head next to the Albury Wodonga Motocross Club for round three of the series, just a stone's throw south of the New South Wales Victorian border. We can expect cooler conditions and a track that will certainly test the riders with plenty of hard pack and deep ruts, Hammy. Looking forward to that one. Very tight track and always close racing. Now make sure you don't miss round three of the Australian Superbike Series as it heads to Wakefield Raceway near Goulburn, New South Wales, scheduled for April 22nd to 24th after an incredibly successful rounds one and two at Phillip Island Raceway and Queensland Raceway. We've got Wayne Maxwell, Troy Herfoss, Brian Starring, a bunch of gun riders there. And of course, don't forget the AORC heads next to Kyogle in New South Wales for rounds five and six of the series after an incredible double header this weekend at Mackay. And of course, Danny, you did a fantastic job there. All right, guys, well, thanks for joining us here at Mackay for round two of the Penride Oils Pro MX Championships brought to you by AMX Superstores. On behalf of Danny Ham, Ken Williams, and myself, Lee Hogan, thank you.